All right, so uh, can you see the screen? Everyone can see the screen? Hello, uh, am I audible? Uh, let me, yes, can, let me know. Uh, so you can see the screen, right? Screen is visible? Yes. Okay, all right, perfect. <clears throat> All right, so uh, we're doing uh, the topic of thermal physics or thermodynamics. And our uh, last discussion was on a thermometer or how do we measure uh, temperature? And uh, there are different ways that we can measure temperature. Uh, specifically, the thing that will help us in uh, measuring temperature is the physical properties of different types of materials. So for example, um, mercury is a material and its physical properties as in its melting and boiling points and uh, these kind of things are very helpful in measuring temperature. So that, com that all of that comes under the expansion of a liquid. While there is another uh, instrument that we can use and that is the th known as the thermocouple and a thermocouple is essentially uh, consists of uh, two uh, different wires. We can have a copper and uh, iron wire, and they're connected at some junction with a voltmeter. Uh, I'll draw that in a bit, and I'll tell you uh, all about thermocouple as well. But uh, in a thermocouple, it uses uh, the EMF or it is known as the potential difference. So the change in uh, potential difference, so I'll use uh, the symbol change in voltage, delta V, uh, that is used to measure uh, the temperature. So the more temperature difference there is, the more uh, this change in potential difference there will be. So we'll talk about that in detail. Uh, but first, uh, let's talk a bit about uh, these thermometers, uh, specifically the one uh, which is using the expansion of uh, liquid, right? So these kind of thermometers are uh, known as liquid in glass thermometer, right? Because, and the name is very uh, simple. Uh, it's telling you what is happening, right? So you have, a glass tube and that tube contains uh, some liquid, could be mercury or any other liquid. And you can use its properties such as the expansion of that liquid or the contraction of that liquid with temperature to measure uh, the temperature. So a physical property is changing with change in temperature. That means that this type of thing can be used to measure uh, these changes, rises or falls in temperatures, right? So, okay, all right. So here, uh, if I try to draw this thing, it's just a glass tube. So let me see if I can uh, draw it. I'll draw it vertically. Let me see one second, okay. Nope. Uh, okay, so let's just draw it horizontally. Right, so it's this is the tube, and it contains uh, some liquid in this thing. So suppose that up until this point there is some liquid in this tube, and here it's a bit pointy at this end, right? And so this end is placed wherever you want to measure the temperature, this one. So for example, if I want to measure uh, the temperature of a boiling water, I'll place this end uh, just above the boiling water where there is steam from this boiling water, right? And then I can measure the temperature of the boiling water. Uh, we'll get into that 
but uh, this is the device and it looks like this and there is this this entire thing let me uh, do it in blue this blue thing is the liquid in this uh, tube right and that this liquid can be uh, mercury or any other type of liquid whose physical property that is uh, its change in its uh, temperature called producing the uh, or expanding this liquid or contracting this liquid is will be helpful to us in measuring the temperature so uh, essentially what happens is uh, as the temperature changes so if temperature rises or it falls what will happen? The liquid will respectively uh, either expand or contract, right? So the liquid in the tube either expands or contracts. And it is this uh, change in length of the liquid is what we'll use to measure the temperature, it is how we'll calibrate our uh, temperature uh, scale or a thermometer, right? So, which means that this amount of expansion or contraction can be matched to some temperature on this scale, right? Expansion can be linked to the temperature. Okay. All right. So now let's see. We have now, by now, we have figured out that, okay, so we'll use this physical, this specific physical property, expansion and contraction of a liquid to measure temperature. Now we need to calibrate our thermometer. So we need, uh, we need to tell our thermometer, okay, what is the maximum limit and the minimum limit that you can measure? Uh, and all the other temperatures will lie in between those two limits. And so these limits are, when we define these limits, we say that we are calibrating our thermometer. So the next step is to uh, calibrate the thermometer. Uh, before uh, I go on to that, is there any uh, question or is it clear? Uh, the liquid in glass thermometer, uh, how we'll use the physical properties of these uh, liquids to measure temperature. Yes, clear. Because of the expansion and contraction of the liquid, right? Clear. Okay, all right. So now let's uh, try to calibrate our thermometer uh, to calibrate our thermometer first of all we need to pick a thermometer as in we have to pick uh, a thermometer is simply a glass tube picking a glass tube is no problem uh, but specifically specifying or choosing what type of a liquid or substance that will be used in a thermometer uh, that's uh, what we'll choose uh, and typically, um, mercury or alcohol is chosen as the, you can call it a thermometric substance, right? Yes. So the first step is to choose the... I have uh, seen a mercury thermometer. Uh, sorry, you have? Yes. Okay, nice. So it, it's just a glass tube. It has mercury uh, contained inside it, right? And when you, if, when it encounters different temperatures, it expands or contracts uh, according to those temperatures, right? So this mercury, we'll call it a thermometric substance. It can be mercury. It can even be alcohol as well. Uh, because these are prone to uh, temperature changes and their expansions and uh, contractions are uh, in accordance with the uh, temperature changes much better than uh, any other substance, which is why these are chosen as more appropriate 
uh, substances, right? So the most common one is mercury. And then we can also have uh, alcohol. Okay, so that's the first part. We have picked our thermometer now. Now, how do I calibrate this thermometer? We do that by uh, specifying two fixed points. These fixed points should be extreme fixed points, as in if one point is, one point should be extremely, uh, so for example, one point is the boiling point the, at the temperature at which uh, the water, or in this case, this mercury starts to boil. Uh, it's also called the steam point, right? And similarly, there is another one which is called the ice point, right? And I'll just discuss these points in a moment, but these are two fixed points uh, that we have to specify, right? And then we'll mark these points on a temperature uh, on our thermometer and mark them. So one would be at the topmost of this glass tube and the other is at the minimum. So you you mark your thermometer in this way, right? So one is one extreme end and the other one is the other extreme end. These two extreme ends are, by the way, specified by phase change because for, for both of these two different points, there is a phase change happening, right? So for example, the uh, ice point is the temperature of melting point of ice, right? And when ice melts, it is basically changing its phase from solid uh, to liquid, right? So I'll explain that over here. What does this mean, phase change? Uh, phase change is essentially, for example, uh, in melting point, ice, changes to water or a liquid form. So basically solid is changing its phase to liquid. And similarly, yeah. uh, we have uh, the, the other point that is the steam point. And in steam point, the liquid, steam point is the boiling point. For example, if water is boiling, what's happening? Water is changing its phase. It's changing its phase from liquid to a gaseous state, right? So turning from water into steam. So water turns into steam and uh, this is the steam point while this was the melting point. I, I right? So question. what's happening is, yeah, yeah, go ahead. Uh, when water uh, turns into ice, uh, it expands, but uh, the particles uh, uh, are uh, closer together when uh, in uh, ice form. Why is that? Why does it expand? Oh, actually, that's, uh, that's an interesting question. It's one of the weird uh, properties of, uh, you can say it's one of the weird properties of liquid states, right? Uh, Meaning, for example, uh, you can say, uh, do we have space over here? No, we don't. let me go on to the next page. Uh, so your question is, uh, can you please repeat your question again? When our water turns into ice, the particles in the water uh, compress. So, and then uh, it also expands. Exactly. Because uh, how exactly that? right so you're saying uh, yeah so on so you basically on freezing water expands right yes i tried okay, so with a, the a water bottle yes exactly so that's actually one of the weird things in nature that water is a spe very special uh, you can say form of liquid which defies many things, right? 
it appears to defy many things about what we know about liquids. Uh, for example, this is one of those things that when frozen, uh, water expands. And the reason is that water molecules are such that when they freeze, when you freeze water, they tend to take a more defined uh, geometry. Their, their geometry is more defined when they're frozen. And they then they will arrange themselves in a pattern that is, uh, you know, that the pattern that we call expansion of these molecules, right? And this uh, expansion is, you can say it is less dense compared to the liquid uh, phase of water, right? So ice is essentially less dense than its liquid uh, form, which is water. And that's why uh, when uh, water freezes, its volume expands instead of contracting. Uh, right? no, so so what, does that what, make sense? Yes, it makes sense. So ice also floats because it's less dense. Exactly, right? Yes. Okay, I understand. So, right. So it, it has to do with the, uh, the overall density of the material, the relative densities of these uh, phases. Okay, so perfect. Uh, where were we? Yeah, we're talking about these phase changes, right? Okay, so melting point and steam point. Now let's uh, quickly uh, go through these melting point and steam points and see how we can measure these melting point and steam points and why are they useful to us in uh, calibrating the thermometer, right? So for example, uh, I have to uh, find out the, let's call it the uh, melting point or it's sometimes also called the ice point, right? So how can we uh, figure out the ice point of any substance? So for example, I'll take, uh, if I need to figure out the ice point or the melting point, I need, uh, if we're talking about water, we need ice cubes, obviously, right? Because we want to figure out their melt, uh, what would be the temperature when that ice cubes melt. So I need to, these ice cubes and I'll place these ice cubes in a container. Uh, sometimes uh, you, you use this thing, it's called a funnel. And uh, you place some ice cubes in this. It's a Y-shaped uh, tube, which is open at, at both ends. And you place some ice cubes in this funnel, right? And obviously you want its melting point when it's going to change its phase. So obviously ice has to melt. So it's going to melt. So just for the sake of it, let's place uh, a beaker uh, under this thing, which will collect all the water that melts from this thing. And the beakers will start uh, to fill up with water. Okay, so this is known as a funnel this tube which is open at both ends and it's a Y-shaped tube. In this tube, we have ice and as the ice melts, it turns into a liquid form, uh, let's say water, right? Uh, now let's put our thermometer in this tube, uh, in this funnel, right? So I'm going to draw thermometer like this, just, and then, you just assume that this uh, tube over here, this is my thermometer. Okay, perfect. So now we have uh, a setup to figure out the ice point of uh, this uh, tube. And uh, what we do is we'll put this thermometer uh, into this funnel that contains ice. Now, when you do that, what will happen? The mercury level in this 
if I draw that mercury like this, this level will start to change, right? This level would start to, uh, it turns out that the from the top, it starts to decrease. So the mercury in this tube starts to fall. So it's contracting, right? And when it happens, when do we know that I have to mark my thermometer as the this is this specific point is the melting point uh, okay when, so when it stop contracting uh when it stop contracting exactly right exactly so when it becomes steady when it stops contracting when it becomes steady eventually what will happen it will keep on, uh, the level will keep on falling and falling and falling. Eventually, after some time, it will become stationary, steady at one point. And after that, no matter how much time changes, it will be at that point as long as uh, it is the this, it is the temperature is at that same uh, value. And this point, you will mark it down as the melting or the ice point of uh this thing so we can mark it with l naught and we'll say that this is the uh lower which is the lower fixed point on this mercury tube uh th our thermometer and this point is known as the lower fixed ice point right it is the ice point lower fixed meaning it's the lower point in this uh mercury tube so that's we have by now we have figured out one specific point now we uh -huh. need another one and our thermometer will be calibrated right which would be the highest now this was the lower fixed point we need the upper bound on the thermometer and that upper bound uh, is known as the steam point or boiling point right so the <clears throat> the apparatus would be uh, almost exactly the same, uh, except for the fact that uh, we'll have our, uh, let me try to draw it, we'll have water in this container, right? And just for practical purposes, I'll have a hole over here. And this hole will allow uh, some steam to escape as well. And I'll close this at the top. And I'll just make a slight hole with which I can put my thermometer uh, in this. Right? So imagine that this is the thermometer. Now the thermometer should not be touching this boiling water. Right? There is boiling water and it's boiling. And hence, there is some rising. It right? should touch the steam. Exactly. So it should touch the steam, but not the boiling water. And when it, so the, uh, so what I'm doing is I'm putting the thermometer into this apparatus by a small hole at top, right? So there is this hole at top. And the end of the thermometer, it's sometimes also called the bulb of the thermometer, right? This is the bulb of the thermometer, which is just the end, the sensitive part of the thermometer, which is used to measure temperature changes, uh, would be placed just above this boiling water where you will find steam rising. So when that steam is rising, the mercury level uh, in the thermometer will eventually change right and so the mercury in this thermometer will start to rise at some point so this is the mercury and eventually it will rise at some point and it will come at this point and it will become fixed right steady it will uh, not rise after this anymore and this would be the boiling point of water and we'll fix uh, we'll call this bp as in the boiling point or you can also call it sp steam point Okay, so far I have not given them numbers. But now uh, I'll say, why not 
make the lowest point if i go back uh no actually it was uh, on the same page but upstairs uh, so if i pick the same point uh if i pick the ice point i mean i have i've not given it any number but now let's say it's a lower point lower fixed point so let's call it zero so i'll say that uh, i'm doing this on my own i'll say that this is and that's how they have calibrated our thermometer so we have zero and we'll use uh, the celsius scale for now so we'll just call, use unit zero degree celsius and then the maximum or which would be the uh, l100 which is the upper or the higher fixed point uh steam point this is 100 this thing uh, is 100 because i am calibrating i'm saying that the maximum number let's say it's 100 so that's the maximum that it can uh go and this is where we say that according to the celsius scale this scale is known as the celsius scale where uh, the lower fixed point is zero and the upper fixed point the maximum uh, temperature which is the, not really the maximum temperature but at the temperature at which water starts to boil is the upper fixed steam point and that's at 100 degrees celsius right so once you do that these points are determined so the main thing was to determine these points next just divide your thermometer into 100 equal parts 100 equal parts 100 because uh, 100 minus 0 the upper fixed point minus the lower fixed point is 100 and then each interval on this thermometer so you know this would be your thermometer let me uh, draw it i don't know if this looks it's on second so let me draw this line and this line okay, so let's suppose that this is the thermometer right and so this point maybe at this point it was uh the what do you call that the ice point right so you marked it as 0 degree celsius over here and suppose at this point it was the boiling point or the steam point of water and you marked it as 100 degree celsius now every single interval between this is 1 degree celsius then 2 then 3 then 4 that's what we mean by dividing it into equal parts up until 100 degree celsius but the parts should be in equal ratios right okay so this is how we will calibrate our thermometer and what what is next we have calibrated we have figured out uh, a thermometer and uh, how can be used how is a thermometer used in measuring changes in temperatures uh, all of that uh, has been uh, figured out now uh, let's talk about how can we compute uh, the temperature of any substance whether it be water or any other thing now everything would be relative to this water right because our thermometer is calibrated using water right water's melting point and water's steam point so now i use this thermometer to calculate the temperature uh, of different substances right so let's let's do that right so how can we uh, calculate temperatures using uh this mercury in glass thermometer remember the uh um, substance inside the thermometer was mercury right so again in mercury thermometer mercury glass thermometer the physical property that uh, uh we are using that is changing with temperature 
is the volume of the fixed mass of mercury that we put inside this tube, right? That's what's changing. The volume is changing. It's expanding or contracting, right? So what is uh, happening? Uh, the volume of fixed mass, mass is fixed because I've put some mass of mercury, some fixed mass of mercury in this glass tube. Now that mass cannot vanish, right? It's going to be in there. So the mass is fixed, but the volume is changing. So volume of a fixed mass changes with change in temperature. <clears throat> right. And so when that happens, uh, you can say that uh, the... Uh, this volume, you can measure it by measuring how much mercury has expanded or contracted by using these numbers that we marked, right? One, two, three, four. And then these numbers will be, uh, we can call them uh, the length of the mercury thread. Right? And then we use these numbers to measure the uh, temperatures, right? So for example, uh, suppose I want to find a, find some temperature, right? An unknown temperature, I don't know uh, the temperature. Uh, I'll take this same tube and I'll put it in uh, this, the subst substance whose temperature that I want to figure out. And then the length of this mercury tube will be some specific value. Right, uh, it it will not be zero. It will not be hundred because these. I mean, uh, it's not necessary that it will be zero or hundred. It will be some value in between. Right, it could be any value. We'll call that value. Uh, so measuring unknown temperature. We'll call that uh, unknown temperature uh, inside the tube. Uh, we'll call that as the length L with the subscript of the symbol, it's theta, right? And this symbol is used in a thermodynamics for uh, to specify temperatures, right? Now, L theta is the, it is not the unknown temperature. It is the unknown, it is the unknown temperatures length of mercury thread. So it is the length of the mercury thread at that unknown temperature, right? I want to find what will this theta be, which theta is the unknown temperature, right? So this L itself is the length and this theta is the temperature, the temperature that we don't, don't know. So I'll use this mercury tube. I'll figure out the value for L theta. Right, because the uh, that would be the length of this thread inside the tube at that unknown temperature. Having that, I can make use of an expression that I'll write down over here. And the de derivation of this expression is not required for the course. Uh, the expression is that the unknown temperature, which is theta, is equal to L of theta, which is the length of the mercury tube at this unknown temperature minus L at zero. L at zero was the melting point, the length of the mercury tube at the melting point, right? Divided by L at 100 minus L at zero into 100. Where L at 100 is the length of the mercury tube at the boiling point of water, while L0 is the length of the mercury. So, you, you, so what you have to remember that these are the lengths of the mercury inside this tube. Now, the Less physical property minutes. that we have... Uh, yeah, uh, sorry, what are you saying? Less than one minute. Less than one minute, okay. So but I'll end this with the physical property over here 
that we are using is the length. Essentially, basically, it